Welcome to the Time to Level Up podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Libros. Each week, I focus on the systems, strategy, and big thinking you need to CEO your business and life to the next level. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Time to Level Up podcast. I am thrilled to have you here. So today, I'm going to have a conversation with author, speaker, coach, Sarah Centrella. Sarah has written three books. I became familiar with her when she, with her second book, which is called Future Boards. And Future Boards is kind of a variation of vision boards. And I think way back in the day, I was trying to create a vision board and kind of wanted more direction on it. It wasn't working for me. And I stumbled across her version of vision boards, which is very different. And I don't even know if it gets you to the same place. I would say it gets you to a place beyond where you are now. So in my series here about thinking big, I thought she was the perfect guest to come on because as you're creating a future board or thinking about what you're, you want your future to be, you must think bigger and beyond where you are right now. And at the end of this conversation, I ask her how she defines thinking big. And I think the answer she gives is very interesting because I find that it's really hard to do what she says to do in order to think big. We've really got to push past where we are right now and almost wipe it out. So sit back, buckle up, and listen in to my conversation with Sarah. And if you haven't already, I'm going to remind you, go to shethinksbigthebook.com, put your name and email in there, and I'm going to send you the first chapter and intro of my book, which is going to be released in September of 2023. And it too is going to help you start to think big. You'll also get a f- couple other free goodies, including a ticket to my Think Big Insider Session with author Andrea that helps you go from just being a reader to an implementer in October. And you're going to get some weekly emails helping you think big as we approach this book launch. But right now, this is about Sarah and I and our conversation. Sit back, buckle up, and listen in. Here we go. Hey, Time to Level Up listeners. Welcome back to the podcast. I am thrilled today to have with me Sarah Centrella, who I'm going to have her introduce herself, but who I started following probably four or five years ago. When I came across her book, which is called Future Boards, one of her books, she has several now, but one of her books called Future Boards, when I was trying to really create a vision board and it wasn't clicking with me. And so, of course, I went to the Googles, as everybody does, and I don't know, up popped her book. And that was the beginning. So welcome, Sarah. I am so happy you're here. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. And I love that it's coming up on Google, right? Yes, there it is. <laughs> that, that's always a great thing. Um, so yeah, my book Future Boards came out in, gosh, 2019. And it was really the culmination, I guess, of almost 10 years of learning the hacks and the fast track on how to manifest in a really very real way. I always say, not only has it changed my life, it's changed my kids' lives, their future, uh, what we've been able to do as a family. And to give a little bit of background for your listeners, I think probably sharing a little bit of my story helps just um, to kind of know what we're talking about here. But my story kind of started, gosh, 14 years ago now, um, 2000, geez, eight, I guess, Um, (laughs) time flies. But it it started with like this really dramatic earthquake moment um, for me when my life essentially just blew up, hit rock bottom. I uh, found out my my husband at the time had been living a double life, uh, was having an affair, and we had three little kids. We had just foreclosed on our house, housing bubble, just gone through bankruptcy, just worst possible timing for something like this to happen. I had three little babies, hadn't worked in two years, you know, just add the list up, right? Not a dollar to my name, on and on. And kind of like in that super, super black moment was really where I had this 
whatever you want to call it, aha moment, <laughs> like your soul, Epiphany. your God, whatever, <laughs> really kind of just spoke to me because I've, I felt like I just could not survive. I didn't see a way out. I didn't see how I could take care of my kids, um, just all this stuff. And I remember kind of in that darkness, I just had this moment of like, well, maybe this is your chance to just create whatever you want. Because it was the first time in my life that I didn't have a known plan. I had been, you know, with my ex since I was 16 years old. So whenever you're married, obviously you plan on forever and your future and all that stuff. And so you kind of think, you know, what you're dealing with. And this was such a dramatic, um, I mean, it literally, I read a text message and ended our marriage in like 10 minutes. (laughs) So it was this really dramatic, just explosion of every single part of my life. And I, I think there was some crazy hope in the idea of, well, now maybe I could create some, I have to, I have to figure out a way to survive anyway. So might as well kind of do all the stuff I sort of wanted to do, but didn't ever think I could. And, um, and that hope just honestly, just is what got me up off the ground and helped me try to figure it out. I didn't ever think any of it was going to happen, honestly, ever, ever, ever. It was just kind of that lifeline yeah. that was keeping me floating. Just the idea of like, maybe life could be better. I don't know how, but just thinking about it makes me feel better. And that's really the only reason why I did it initially. And so my very first future board, what I call future board now, um, wound up just being me on Google, image searching, all of these things that I was kind of starting to fantasize just and now I know it's, you know, it can be a trauma response to creating like this happy place in your brain to kind of detach from how bad it was initially. But it actually wound up being this amazing hack that the more I focused on what I wanted, the more it actually started happening. And like I said, I never in my wildest dreams thought it ever would. But about a year and a half after that, and I'm starting to get on my feet and have all these pictures at the first job that I get and whatever. And I'm looking at them all day long and just kind of fantasizing about, you know, this great new life that I have all these pictures of. And literally 18 months later, it just started showing up just boom, 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 all over the place. Like all these crazy experiences, you know, it's like one, give me, yeah, it was just like, it was crazy. So one of the first ones that I, that I knew was a manifestation. I didn't even know anything about manifesting back then, but but I knew it wasn't random. I'll put it that way. Was okay. um, I had had a picture of Times Square on that initial board that I had like printed out, and next to it I wrote, "Yeah, New York City" or something like that, whatever. And so this is a picture I had been looking at for the past year plus, every single day at my little cube at work. And like I said, about a year and a half uh, after he left, I was given my first work trip assignment, which was a really big deal. I'd like moved up from the closet of like inside sales to like yeah. finally being outside sales and getting my first business trip. Um, and it was to New York city and I was there for a week and, uh, you know, still at a time where I was barely making ends meet, but here I am in New York city on the company card, whining and dining all my clients and just going like, Holy shit. You know, did I just wake up as Cinderella? Like what is happening right now? And that was the first time where I was like, I know this isn't random because I put that picture on before I had the job, before I even had a job, you know? So I was like, "Mm." you know, a lot of people look at this and be like, yeah, I work trips, whatever. And I was like, no, I know I did this. Somehow I did this. And that was what started the whole quest for me. I was like, okay, well, if I could do that, what else could I do? And then it just, and that was like eight future boards, you know, ago um, since then taken my kids to seven countries, flown private jets, been courtside, NBA games, like you name it, you name it. Just the list goes on and on of what has manifested from my board since. So, so fun. That's how we got to a book in 2019. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's how I got to the book. Do you think what happened, like besides looking at pictures, what new thoughts did you have that helped create what you created? Because Yes, we can look at pictures. But what? How did your thinking change? Yeah, that's a great question. And you know, the pictures is one component. Yes, literally one out of nine. Um, I teach a nine-step method now, um, and that's that's 
step five out of nine. But the crazy thing that happens, I'll talk about the, the picture component first, just because it's very different than how most people would do a standard vision board. What typically happens in the vision boards that we were making back whenever, a million yeah. years ago, um, those were to me nothing more than a collage. So when you're a teenager, you make a collage, you cut out magazines, like, hello, we're grown now. Why would we do mm-hmm. that? This doesn't make any sense. Um, number one, it, it, to me, that just logically made no sense to me. Number two, how is an editor of any magazine on the planet going to know what my personal dreams are? It's just not going to happen. So it doesn't make any sense again, right? So even back when I didn't know anything, I went on Google and I matched images with what my head was already creating that mattered to me. And that now I know is one of the biggest, I just gave all your listeners one of the biggest hacks that if they did nothing else, that is going to change the game for them because that is my custom created future reality. That is what motivates me, Sarah, yours is going to be completely different, right? Because you have experiences you want to live. You have moments you want to create for your family. You have achievements that, that are unique to you and how you look at those moments is totally different than anyone else. Right. And so to be able to find that match is, is everything. I mean, that's humongous and no one is, is doing that. The future boards method is completely unique in that way. So now we find all those pictures on Pinterest. There's the other free tip (laughs) Um, because Pinterest has all those. But to your point in thinking, um, it's it's humongous. And so I think way back when, when I didn't know anything, what was starting to change without me even understanding it or doing it intentionally was that my focus was shifting from all day, every day, focusing on everything that was going wrong and how little I had. And I literally lost everything. I mean, you know, like we had a big, beautiful home. All of a sudden I'm in a one bedroom apartment that's getting like shot up, you know, and I'm on food stamps. Like it's just, it's crazy. Right. So I had nothing. And I think like thinking about that and kind of letting that go round and round, I knew just wasn't mentally healthy for me. Now I know that, thank God I didn't do that because that just creates the reality over and over and over again, right? So by me starting to think about things I wanted instead and things that were making me happy and thinking about them in terms of why the vacation would make me happy because I'd be able to have these moments with my family because I'd be able to have these memories because, you know, all these other things that allowed me to start slowly thinking it was possible, even though I didn't initially when I started at all. Uh, But over time, the more I was surrounded with it, the more it just like anything becomes the norm, right? Yes. Um, And in lots of ways, we're desensitized in a bad way, but this actually works in our favor because you could put a dream that seems completely unrealistic and insane, but the more space you give it to grow both in your mind and surrounding yourself with either pictures of it or some types of reminders of it, the more over time it becomes like, oh yeah, well, when that happens. Right. Like, oh, yeah. Right. You know, like, and it just yes. takes a, a natural progression. Um, and you stop questioning it the yeah. way that you did in the very beginning. And so now I teach some skills on how to kind of get there faster and really train your brain to get there and hone that in. But that really is the progression that happened for me that first year and a half without being very conscious of it and without mm-hmm. knowing at all what I was doing or having kind of any exposure to personal development at all. It's interesting because I talk about in my coaching and my clients, but also in my book that's coming out in the fall about how, when we create a plan, okay, where there has to be, there's an action plan. Like these are the things I want to do. There's going to be kind of a timeline. I want to do them in the next year or 10 years, but then there also has to be a belief plan. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. it's almost like the more you started to think about this, and allow, give it space to kind of, I'll call it like bubble up in a good way. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Not in a a cauldron, which which pot way that, that, that was you creating that belief plan and feeding it, like fueling it with more and more and more. Yes, this is possible because I think the alternative, the alternative to that 
is if you don't give it that space to grow, then you're allowing almost like the weeds to come in and fear and doubt and and all of those things, which squelch. Yeah. The yeah and I exactly right. And I say that most people on the average are filtering their dreams out without even knowing it. Like just, it's a yeah. subconscious filter. That's like, Nope, that's not for you. That's not for you. You don't have the money for that. Who are you to think that um, that's cool for other people? Like, it's just, it's happening all day long. It's happening. The shows you watch the, you know, the Instagram feed that you're following, you're like, Oh, wouldn't that be cool? But that's not for me. You know, just all day long, you're kiboshing your dreams. Right. And what the rock bottom allowed me to do is I had nothing to lose. So I was like, I don't fucking care. Like, yeah, you know, let's like go for makes, it. Yeah, yeah. This makes me happy. It's not hurting anybody. I'm not hurting anybody. And so the more that I thought about them, the more space they had, like you said, to grow. And that was absolutely clutch because 99% of the people that I work with do not know how to let something grow like that. They just don't. We have so many innate blocks in us worthiness and finances are the two most common. They're the things that almost instantly filter everything we want Mm -hmm. to know Mm -hmm. and just tell us that what we have is enough that the life that we live, we should only be grateful for wanting more is bad, blah, blah, blah. There's just all these various kind of filters that, that we put on. And, and all of those are there to protect us in the space that we're in and to keep us there. Yes. For making changes to keep us from growing. Yep. And once you're kind of aware of them and it takes a takes a while, takes some training, then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, why is my head telling me I can't have that? Mm-hmm. Why is my head telling me I don't deserve that? That's kind of crazy. And you start questioning what's been going on in your head and you start allowing these dreams to have the space to grow. And I think of them as like a little seed. Yes. They need sunlight. They need water. They need protection. Yes. They need room to grow. Yeah. The right before we got on our call, um, I had had a consult call, and this woman like c- clearly knows that this is something that she could benefit from, like no uncertain terms. And then she's like, "Well, I don't know." Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you said the two things. You just said money, finances, mm-hmm. and worthiness. They both yeah. came up in that that. A five second conversation. She's like, well, I mean, I'm not sure I have the money to do this, but yet, you know, three seconds ago, she told me money wasn't an issue. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then, then the worthiness set in. She's like, well, I kind of probably should be grateful for just where I'm at right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Very, very common. Very yeah. Common. It's just, very, and we're it's, very embedded with those as almost default responses. And I really encourage everyone to question them and question them and question and start to see them as excuses because that's really all they are. They're just excuses with like a nicer name that makes us feel warm and fuzzy. Like, oh, if I don't want more than I'm a good person, you know, if I don't want more than I'm being selfless and isn't that great, you know, (laughs) or I'm good with what I have. Right. Yeah. So I asked her, I said, so then she said, well, I'm going to just, I need some time to think about this. So I asked for permission first, but then I said, let me just ask you this. What are you really thinking about? Like what you're going to think about? Yeah. What are you really, really thinking about? Yeah. No one has any great answer to that. Right, right. Their brain is coming back to the excuse. It's just coming back yes. to the excuse yes. over and over and over and over again. Yes. again. Yeah. And, you know, to me, that just like anything else, um, whenever I'm dealing with somebody who is kind of like, I don't really know what I want, or I'm feeling a little stuck, or I'm feeling unmotivated, or any of those things, it is always going to come back around to if you don't know what you want, why you want it, you could talk to that woman every single day, and she's going to have the same response, right. right? Like, she has to have that identified, this is what I want, this is why I want it. And if you can help me get there, that makes perfect sense to me. If I don't know yes. what I want, I'm just kind of floating around. Then I, of course, I have no motivation for truly anything. Right. And so the future board people, will, you know, ask me a lot like, oh, you know, like, where do you come up with all of this? And and for me, it, the very first step in all of it, like I said, I have nine steps. So step one is what I call dream it. And that's where you begin to allow yourself to scope a future that looks absolutely nothing like your current life. Mm-hmm. That alone 
is almost impossible for someone to do without coaching. They just cannot do it. No, it's hard for me to do, you know, it's hard for us to do it, right? It it is almost impossible because the only thing you're going to come up with is the pre-identified next step to any of anything I ask you, right? Yes. We all kind of think, oh, well, my next step in my finances is to pay off my mortgage or my next step is to get the master's or, you know, we know what the next step is. It's already been hanging around our head forever. But if I ask you what's step 20 and all you've identified is step one, you can't even come up with step three, right? Like just the whole thing is a blank slate. So my job is to come in there and say like, okay, if it's not a cliche and it's actually true that anything is possible, then I need you to give me what your anything is. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, and it's usually one version a little bit better than what, what they have. And so what I've done in my life using future boards is literally completely revamp my life every two to three years. Like if you go back and you look at my Instagram over the last five or six years, and you've been following me for a little while, I look like a different, everything about my life is different because Mm -hmm. my goal is I want to upgrade every single part of my life continuously for the rest of my life. And I want that to always be in alignment with my true self, Mm -hmm. my happiness, my purpose, centered around my family, the things that I love and care about, but I want all of it to get exponentially better. Yes. Not just one little part, right? All of it. And I a hundred percent believe that every single person out there wants that, but is too afraid to say it or has been told they can't say it or has been told it's wrong to say it. Right. Or they don't give themselves, I think this time or space to to that going back to that question. What do you want? Yep. They don't it's even the hardest question. To it is the hardest question. It's the hardest Ever. question, but you do have to start somewhere, but they don't give themselves the space or time or tools to even explore. What do I want? Right. Yep. They just yeah. don't go there. I think and, you brought up something really earlier, earlier saying, I think sometimes it's easy to easier to come at it from the, so I want X so that I can blank. Right. So if you said, I want to spend more time with my kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. How is that going to happen? How are we going to make that happen? And it's like, so I want to travel more so that I can create experiences and time and have bonding with my kids. Like that's so that I can, or in order to is super important. I found. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's critical because the the other component that's kind of very unique in what I teach when it comes to manifesting and future board specifically is that every picture we choose represents a moment in time. In other yeah. words, so if you even look at the pictures behind me, yep. they're all off Pinterest. And so all of them are pictures of real people doing whatever the thing is, whether it's a, a travel picture or a speaking picture, or whatever. Someone took a picture of the person living that moment. And that is representative of, in my mind, the exact moment that my brain is playing out. In other words, like if I put a lot of people do this and I, whenever someone says, Hey, I made my future board and they tag me on social media and it has words on it. I'm like, but you didn't, you clearly didn't read the book. You didn't follow the instructions. That was one of the things I loved about your book. There's no more, no little sayings, no words. Yeah. There's no words. There's no I word. It. I mean, we we do words in other in the other steps, but the board is a visual representation of the movies created in my mind already. So that all they do is trigger the movie. And that's mm-hmm. the biggest part, right? And so every picture is a moment or an experience. When you look at my board, you don't see like the Rando Mansion or the Lambo or the shit that people like cut out of magazines, right? Yep. You see, you know. I'm looking at the one right behind me and uh, there's a college kid graduating, walking across the stage. And that's representing, you know, that moment when my son does that and, and what a full circle that's going to feel like. And from where we started as a single mom, being able to, you know, help my son live his dream. Like that is what that represents. It's not mm-hmm. just this random thing, right? Is the yep. moment that I want to feel the way that kid feels in that picture. So those are always how I'm finding out what it is I want is I'm looking at it through that lens. Mm-hmm. What are the moments and experiences that I want? Mm-hmm. What are the memories when I'm 95 and I'm looking back over my life, what are my top 30 memories? The ones that I'm just like, oh my God, I can't believe I was able to do that with whoever, my kids, people that yes. I love. Like, what are those things? And 
sometimes that helps me get there, do that reverse engineering a little bit. Yeah. Like that experience would be amazing. I would never forget that, you know? And Mm -hmm. so then what happens is when you start to manifest it and you are living those moments, the real life version of it is so heightened and so intense that there's no feeling like it on the planet. And you are present and you're in the moment and you're like overwhelmed with gratitude versus, and I know we've all probably done this, worked really hard for something, got it. And we're like, why is this day a letdown? Like, yes. this sucks. Yes. This isn't how I thought it would be. Like, yes. this sucks. Or when it's over, we're like, Ugh. you know, like, and there's nothing worse than working really hard for a goal or whatever that you wanted, getting it and being completely let down by how it actually felt. So this, because we're looking at it for those moments and experiences and the memories and how it's going to feel to be there when it happens, it's that times 10. It's a total addiction. (laughs) It is. totally. So what's on your board right now? Oh my gosh. So all the the other tip is uh, all the boards have five categories. They represent all five categories of your life so that we are holistically moving our life forward. Like we were talking about earlier. Again, most people have only scoped out their career and maybe, maybe a little bit of finance and then have a vague idea of what the future sort of holds for their family. Super, super vague. You talk to any mom and you ask her what her kids are going to be like in five years. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, I I, I never thought my kids were actually going to be teenagers or whatever. They're like, you know, you're stuck in today. But that forward kind of planning, we do that in all areas of our life. We do it in, um, in finance and abundance. We do it in career, of course in mind and body, which is really important. I have to move that forward the same way I'm moving everything else forward. I have to be very conscious of it. And then we have this category that nobody has that is the balance key. If you're looking for a balanced, happy life, which is your passions and joys. What do you do just for fun? What do you do just for fun? purpose. That's the whole reason. That might be the hardest. Um, And it is 100% (laughs) the hardest. People stare at me like I'm lost my mind when I'm like, what are your hobbies? What do you, what do you schedule, you know, a couple of times a week just for fun? People are like, I don't have time for that. I don't have money for that. Like, what are you talking right. about? I'm like, but do you make your kids do it? Well, of course my kids are yes. in every sport. They're in every language learning. They're in this, that, and the other thing. But what happens as soon as they're traveling, they're going yeah. on the trips, right? Yeah. Like we quit doing that as adults. We understand the value that we're supposed to do it for our kids, right? Because it helps mm-hmm. them grow and be rounded and all these things. Hello, we still need it as adults too. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. We totally yeah. do. So cool. So, well, this has been very fun to talk about all of this. Yeah. I could talk about this for days and days. Tell um, my listeners, you've got two other books out there now too, don't you? I do. Yes. Okay. I have. Um, so future boards is the one that we've been talking about. This, the, this is the middle book. Um, and my newest one is all the things I wish I knew. And that is life lessons for women covers everything. And then my original one hustle believe receive has eight of the nine steps, um, that I teach now. Awesome. And what is the best way for someone to find you? Uh, so they can just go to sarahcentrala.com and find everything and more there um, and follow on Insta, Sarah Centrella, So Awesome. And all that will be in the show notes. Well, this has been great. Let me ask you one more question. What do you think thinking big really means? What, how would you define thinking big? Most people can't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Going back I know. to what I just was talking about. Um, again, they're just going to come with, up with the next version, which is already in their mind. So to me, thinking big is completely wiping the slate clean of everything that's known and brainstorming all the unknown. And so that is an enormous stretch for people. And again, if you're looking at it on the scale of how you want to advance through your life and you maybe know what the next two steps are, Mm -hmm. thinking big is step 20, step 30. It's love it. It's out there. It's It's out there. It's out there, but but you you have to do that. And I, I think of dreaming as a balloon. So 
you know, like those, mm-hmm. that one or two steps is like trying to blow up that tiny little balloon, you know, that makes yeah. you feel, have a brain aneurysm trying to do it. Yes. But then over time, what starts to happen, it gets looser and looser. And then you get the full thing. So that's, that's what we're talking about here. And, and it's a muscle. It will push, it will open, it will expand. It just needs a lot of work in the beginning to force that to happen. Well, let's get blowing up that balloon. Ah, yes. Let's get big. Think big. Let's get big. <laughs> Think big. All right. Well, thank you for being here. It has been a pleasure. And remember, listeners, check out Sarah's Instagram and all of her books. And she's just fun to follow too. I'll give you the, I'll put, yeah. put a plug in for that to see where she's going next. Thanks. So it was great, great chat. And thanks so much for having me on the show. You are welcome. Yeah. So what did you think of that conversation? And what do you think of wiping out everything you already know and really zoning in to what could be possible or what's even, you don't even think is possible, but what you want to happen. I want to go back to that word want. What do you want to happen in your future? What do you want to happen? This is one of the hardest questions that I ask my clients, the hardest questions for them to answer. It's hard sometimes for me to answer that right? It's, she mentioned, it's really hard to do this without a coach. It's so true. Today, I was doing a vision to action intensive and I was asking my clients to imagine what is it going to be like 10 years from now? What do you want your life to look like 10 years from now? Oh my goodness. All they could really go with was what year it would be, how old they'd be, maybe where they want to be living. Other than that, kind of a an empty blank slate. So I found it really interesting how she walked us through that process of how she created what she really, really wanted. And you can do that too. So check out her links in the show notes. If you haven't gone to shethinksbigthebook.com to get your intro or first chapter of She Thinks Big the Book, if you're listening to this before September, 2023, when the book launches, I encourage you to go there. And if a book has already launched, if we're past that, go there and get the book, the real book, the whole book and nothing but the book. All right, my friends, reach out. Let me know how you're thinking big or if you're having trouble thinking big, schedule a call. Let's chat about it. You can find the link to schedule a call on my website or at Andrea's with an S, links with an S.com. Let's do it. Talk to you soon. Hey, listening to podcasts is great, but you also have to do something to kick your business up a notch. You need to take some action, right? So... Go to Andrea's with an S, links with an S dot com, Andrea's links dot com and take the quiz. I guarantee you'll walk away knowing exactly what your next best step is to level up.